And we're talking with Herb Peterson. Welcome, Herb. Thank you, Stephen. Nice to be here. Well, the uh, the news a, a few weeks ago uh, wasn't really, really great. We lost Earl Scruggs. Yes, indeed. Uh, sad loss for the music world. Now, you had uh, an experience with him when you were younger. Can you tell us about your time in the Foggy Mountain Boys? Yes, uh, it was a big treat for me. I was in Nashville working with Vern Williams and Ray Park in a duet, uh, Vern and Ray, as they were known. They recorded for, oh gosh, Capitol, and I think they had a single out or two. They were like the Leuven Brothers, and wonderful singers, and uh, a great rich heritage of uh, early country music. And uh, I was uh, on an early morning TV show, The Smile and Eddie Hill Show, and Eddie Hill was famous for discovering, quote unquote, the Leuven Brothers and bringing them to Capitol Records and all that. So he had a TV show back in the uh, mid-60s, Channel 5 in Nashville. And Earl saw me on that TV show, playing banjo with Vernon and Ray. And um, I, he told me that he got my name, my phone number through the musicians union in Nashville, and called me up and literally invited me over to his home. And uh, I was living in Madison, Tennessee at the time, which is a suburb of Nashville. And went over and uh, spent some time with them. Uh, I was 23 years old and just scared out of my wits to meet the master, you know. But he was so sweet to me, he just, uh, I just felt so at ease. He invited me in and we played some music. Uh, and uh, <laughs> he played the guitar and he wanted me to play banjo, so I played banjo for him. So when we got through, he said to me, I kind of got you here under false pretenses, and I didn't know what he meant, and he said, uh, I have to go into the hospital for an operation on my hip. Uh, he had a bad car wreck in 1955, and there were still some bone spurs in there that were really giving him problems. So he said, I'd like you to uh, uh, take my place with uh, Lester and, and the guys if you're interested. And I just said, I am. I'm thrilled beyond belief. I, I, do you think I can do it? And he said, well, I just heard you play in front of me and you sounded great, so uh, it's totally okay with me. I'd like to bring you down to the Opry tonight, meet Flat and the rest of the guys, the Foggy Mountain Boys. So that was it. I went home, packed a bag for like a week's worth of work, went back to Earl's house. We got in his Cadillac, drove down to the Opry, and uh, I met Lester Flat and Let's see, uh, Josh Graves, Jake Tullock, bass player, Paul Warren, the fiddle player, and Johnny Johnson, who was playing uh, rhythm guitar with them for a while. And uh, so from that point, they, you know, we did uh, the opera show and then uh, hopped on the Martha White bus and drove out of town toward West Virginia. And it was just like one of those rock dreams, you know, uh, where you, th that coffee table book that came out where, you know, all of your, all of your dreams come true. Well, that was it for me. I was 23, and, and I had gotten to meet Earl and spend time with him, and also work with Lester Flat. And uh, it was just a thrill beyond words. Now, what what was Earl like as a as a guy? I mean, you had a, enough time to spend with him to really get to know him a little bit as a person. What kind of person? He was, was he? very gracious. He was uh, very humble, almost to the point of embarrassment to people around him because he literally would say things that would belie his importance, you know, in, in the music industry, you know, and he said, well, I'm just glad I could, you know, contribute a little bit to the music business, you know, that sort of thing, and, and he is probably one of the most copied musicians in the world, in the, in the history of music, and uh, anybody who plays the five-string banjo, I can tell you right now, has been influenced by Earl Scruggs in some way. Uh, big or small, I and mean, there's so many great five-string players out there now. It, it's just uh, it, it's just a part of his legacy that he's just passed on to all of us. You know. Now the style that he developed was a singular style. It, it really kind of rewrote the book on banjo playing. Well, right? there were three finger style players back then: Charlie Poole and Snuffy Jenkins, and uh, so he learned a lot from listening to those guys. And you can look up Charlie Poole. P-O-O-L-E, 
and check out some of the songs that he has recorded. And you'll hear a lot of Earl's uh, influence in there uh, because of the way he played. Earl had this wonderful right hand where it was just so smooth the way he played. It, it just it was a lot different than most of the five string players back then. Um, Uncle Dave Macon frailed the banjo. He didn't play three finger style. So Earl kind of brought the banjo out from a comedic type instrument to something with a little dignity and made it more of a almost a jazz instrument, if you will. And we just we refer to bluegrass music as redneck jazz anyway. Wow. So those of us who are in it. And uh, it is because it's a very spontaneous type of music. So I've, I've heard the term hillbilly jazz too. Yes, absolutely. And uh, there's another word that starts with an S that uh, <laughs> uh, we refer to it as well. Now, um, now I, I saw a film clip of Earl where um, he explained his picking technique, uh, and he uh, had he showed the pick on his thumb, yes. and then the picks on the first two fingers, uh -huh. the index and the middle finger. Correct. And and then he, he gave a quick demonstration of how he did that, uh -huh. and it was like the fingers were blurred. Yep. How the hell, how the heck would you, you know, watch him and try to cop a lick? He was just so great, yes. so fast. The thing is, when you talk to people like Sonny Osborne and, and J.D. Crow, who are both you know, right from that stable of that traditional style of playing, both Sonny and JD got to see Earl as a young man play that way and just sit in front of him and, and learn. For me, out in California, I had to listen to records and try to figure out very painstakingly how to, how to do this. And there weren't any videos at the time, and so it was just records, so it was, it was a very tedious process. Nowadays, kids can really learn the banjo a lot faster, and you know, that's the way it is now, which is great. So, well, now, 40-some-odd years later, uh, Earl passed on. Mm -hmm. What do you think his legacy, I mean, you said earlier that every banjo player, every five-string banjo player that followed him owes a debt to him. Yes. But... And, and it kind of ties in with what Loafer's Glory is doing in, in terms of bringing the old time music and the old styles yes. and, and the traditional uh, into, the, into the present and yes. hopefully preserve it for the future. Right. It's, it, it's one of those things where we've, we have an obligation, I think, to keep the music moving in a positive direction. I mean, there's a lot of young bands out there that have gone way to the right of the traditional bluegrass music and it's more jazz grass or whatever you want to call it. I mean, great artists like Bela Fleck and Sam Bush, you know, they've taken it to that next level. What we're doing is trying to incorporate, if you will, bluegrass and old time music. So you can kind of get an idea of what it sounded like back in the 30s and 40s before Bill Monroe assembled that first bluegrass band, which was Lester Flatt, Earl Scruggs, Cedric Rainwater, and Chubby Wise. That was the original bluegrass band. And so we're just trying to, is a tip of the hat from us, uh, our thanks to Earl and Lester and all the great traditional bluegrass musicians from that era. Now when you play out now, uh -huh. in your audiences, are they old people or are you seeing young people come in to like try to steal your licks? Yes, a lot of young folks coming, uh, a lot of older folks too. Uh, it's, it's one of those things where it's a family type of music. At most of the festivals you see young kids, you know, pre-teens sitting there listening to us. Teenagers, their parents and their grandparents. So it's a very wide audience which is great. Well, thanks very much, Herb. I appreciate it. Appreciate your sharing your memories of, uh, of Earl, and uh, we'll share them with everybody else. Thanks, Stephen. Yeah. 
go. Uh, I Three, two.
one more time, guys.